and welcome to Blab It, our first episode number 22 in 2021. Um, my name is Glenn Ingram. I've been working in sales, marketing, branding for, let's say, a minute or two. Um, I hate to say 20 plus years because that makes me sound older than the 30 years old that I say that I am. But I enjoy talking with people and help them communicate better and grow their companies. Paul? And my name is Paul Geiger. I am the bit to Glenn's Blab. Together we are Blab It. Great to see everyone here. I'm a New York City public speaking coach, presentation expert, helping individuals and businesses and organizations to be able to make their message very concise and then deliver it in a very confident manner. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Craig? So my name's Craig Campbell. I'm based in Glasgow um, in Scotland. So apologies for the accent for anyone listening. I know it's a bit rough, but I'm an SEO guy. I've been doing SEO for 18 years. I've been everything from the jackass working at home as a freelancer, pretending I knows, knew what I was doing, to building up an agency. And now hopefully I've got things figured out and do a lot of affiliate marketing training courses and speaking at conferences is more uh, along the lines of what I do on a daily basis uh, at the moment. So yeah, that's a bit about me. All right, sounds good. I've got a quick question for you, Craig. You've been doing this, uh, you've been in a SEO for, for a long, long time. And I know it's, in a lot of ways, it's simple. And in a lot of ways, it's very, very complex. So let me just go right to the personal side of things. And that is, if you could tell your novice self 18 years ago, one thing about SEO, what would that be? Because I think for most of our audience and our listeners, they consider themselves to be a novices in this area. So what, what would you tell your younger self? Um, I think the one thing that really still irritates me right now is the first five years of my SEO career, I listened to those so-called gurus who were spouting so much information um, that, that led me in a wild goose chase basically for you know four or five years. Um, I didn't really do my own testing. I was hoping what that guy said was gospel and, and it would work very well for me. And I didn't take that action because I just assumed as a young guy that everyone told the truth. And obviously, as you grow up, you realize that people are salesy, people are saying things to mislead you, people are just making things up as they go along. So do your own testing. Don't just listen to what a guy says. And I mean that uh, with the greatest respect to the people who do talk. Not everyone talks uh, nonsense, but people have to try and test their own things. And I was lazy. I just wanted, I was expecting someone to drop it in my lap for free. And that doesn't happen. So don't expect it. Don't waste five years of your time expecting Glenn Ingram to lay it all in your lap free of charge, because that's not how life works. You have to work at it. You need to schmooze, you need to test stuff, and you need to get yourself out there and, and, you know, network and make friends and all that kind of stuff. And that is where the information comes from. Not on a forum, not in a webinar, not at a conference. Um, and don't expect that to ever change. Hmm. Well, I think the same thing what you're kind of saying, in my opinion, holds true to if you're doing sales, if you're doing public speaking, whatever you're doing, is to listen to what Craig does. Listen to what maybe I do. Listen to what Paul does and kind of digest it a little bit and then try it. Because if you don't test or try whatever someone's telling you, how do you know if it ever works for you? And that, and that really is, is something interesting. And really, to be honest with you, both of you gentlemen are, are, have more experience in this area than I do. And again, I know I'm putting myself in the position of, of a lot of our listeners, which is we don't often really go about testing. I mean, it's really very interesting what, what both of you guys are saying about how important it is to test and have an A, like an A-B test. So you really understand what the effect is of all the wheel spinning that you do, correct? Exactly. Um, 
so many people are the same. They just don't test. They'll just wildly take what Glenn, and, and I'm only using Glenn as an example. Glenn hasn't misled, but Glenn says something. People take it as gospel. They'll start telling people about it. And then this Chinese whisper effect starts happening and everyone's doing it and it's all bloody wrong. And that's what's wrong with the world in general, regardless of whether it's sales or whether it's, you know, anything that any of us do. People just don't want to spend that time. People are fundamentally lazy, and uh, that that is the problem. And for for me, I wanted the easy way out. I didn't realise it was going to be as hard. <laughs> but you know, you could have probably been a doctor in the time it took me to to learn this basic SEO thing. Um, you know, and, and and it is fairly basic. A lot of it's common sense, but it's just you don't know what you don't know and. And I think, again, many of us have been in it from a young age and they were, were young and naive anyway. So, again, you just need to... And we think we know best as well. A bit of ego goes there. You're like, I'm not listening to that guy. You know, I know better. I'm going to do it my way and, and stuff like that. So you need to drop all of that kind of stuff in and just try things out. Now, I'm going to ask you this because it's kind of funny. I run into this all the time and I'm interested to see how often this has been posed to you. You know, you're talking with someone and they're talking with a, another company that's this huge company and these people understand X, you know, SEO, pay-per-click and stuff like that. And I try and explain to them, in reality, I've spent six figures on my education to do this stuff, messing things up, learning from different people, taking bits and pieces that most people that work for a big company have never invested that type of money. The company's not going to invest that type of money in them because if they do that, they're going to leave and start their own thing. So when, if someone asks you, you know, why would I work with someone with a smaller company like yours, Craig, versus a big agency, how would you respond to that? I mean, it, exactly the way you're saying it is no one can have or, or have the same level of experience as me. Uh, well, they can, obviously, if they've been in the game and done exactly what I've done. But I've invested hundreds of thousands of pounds uh, traveling the world, you know, talking to you know, people in the industry, speaking at conferences, talking to people at bars that, that you just can't beat that. And there's guys sitting in an agency who, you know, d don't know the first thing about how to write content or how to structure an affiliate page. So that is what you're up against because someone's getting massive overheads and a big company does not make them better than me. And I have actually suffered um, in the past where a customer said to me, I, I helped them grow. Um, and they actually moved a few different premises and their business was growing. And then they turned around to me and say, and said to me something along the lines of, we about growing you, we're going to go to a big agency who does graphics and, and all of this stuff all combined. Now, anyone out there cannot be a master of everything. Um, you know, I cannot be a master of public speaking and, and, and all of these kind of, you know, things that, that maybe Paul has you know, hone your skills on, Paul. Um, you know, I'm good at SEO and I've got to fully focus on that because it's a thing within itself. The same way public speaking is a thing, the same way, um, you know, it, access, website accessibility and stuff like that is a thing. You know, these things have so m many things underlying there that have to be kept on top of for you to become an expert. Someone out there, a general marketer, probably doesn't even know what um, you know, the, the the ADI compliance or whatever it is, is, um, is you know they don't even know what that is. Do you want that guy running with your website and googling it? Absolutely not. And the same by the same token, you don't want some running a middle SEO guy like me teaching you public speaking because Paul, that's you know your thing and uh, you you've got <laughs> you know you've honed your skills over the years. In, in developing that. So I would rather go to an expert. It's the same way you would never get an electrician to come out and fix a leak in your toilet. Why Why would you ever consider that? Um, so I think, you know, too many people in this industry try and make themselves a jack of all trades rather than a content writer or a link builder or whatever it might be. The people that have been massively successful in our industry probably hone down in certain elements within SEO. There's link builders. I've got friends who just do nothing else but link building. I've got friends who do nothing else but auditing. Um, so you really can become an expert in one thing. And I think that's what I would rather use. You know, I don't want a run-of-the-mill guy, I'm, you know, working in my house or whatever it might be. 
in the same way I don't want a run of the mill guy working on my website because it's just not going to give me that ROI. Mm. Now, in terms of your personal brand, Craig, and the evolution of that, how have you seen that evolve over these 18 years? And I know, you know, we're, we're all specialists, as you say, masters in a certain, in a certain area. And I know that I have really felt myself in really in the last 18 months, make an interesting adjustments, not, not leaving, not abandoning what was there before. But uh, I guess my question is, what is the growth that you're seeing in your personal brand? And maybe some advice you could give to our listeners about growing their personal brand as well. I mean, I think it's a natural progression um, that when, you know, as things evolve, as platforms like YouTube or, or whatever become bigger, you're going to have to dip your toes in the water to get traffic from these kind of sources. So the way I see it is, you know, I, I spent my first few years as a, a freelancer. I spent nine years running an agency where no one really knew my name publicly. And in the last five years, I wanted to pivot and I wanted to do more conference speaking, more YouTube stuff, more video stuff. Now, I'm not a, a you know professional actor or a guy that you know, has all these kind of on-screen skills, but you need to embrace what is working really well for people out there. And obviously putting yourself out on these types of shows or at conferences or whatever, it still sales no matter what way you look at it. You're demonstrating your knowledge and you, you're getting that audience to, to buy into you and building your brand, building authority and trust for what you do really is the next step because the way I see it is there's so many digital marketers out there. Why would someone come to me in Glasgow, for example? Um, you know, and that's where I think, you know, building a brand, building trust, talking on podcasts, demonstrating that you are actually a guy worth listening to is going to help your business because I've got guys all over the world who come to me saying, I want this, I want that, I want training, I want coaching, I want this. And it's all because of that brand building um, that I've done. Now, I've not done anything that's extra special, nothing that no one else can do. Um, I think a lot of people have this nervousness when they, they don't want to talk in camera, they don't want to talk in stage. I've been there, you know, talking on stage and I've, I've had the dry mouth, the, the cold sweats, going oh and there's only 50 people there i'm like oh and I, you know i'll give you a story actually one of my first ever talks um i remember standing outside my, the, the, my body started to sweat really badly because i was so nervous and uh, i stood outside and my wife was in a hotel along the road and i was literally that close to just phoning the guy and saying something emergency came up and i had to go away that close from my first ever speaking gig I was drenched in sweat. So anyway, somehow I didn't run away. I went down. I was drenched in sweat, really nervous, and done an okay talk. Um, <laughs> but um, I had to put my neck out there. It really scared me. But what I would say is, obviously, going to people at you who could have probably helped me somewhat with that or whatever um, would have been a good thing, but I didn't know you at that point. But you have to put yourself out of your comfort zone if you want to push up to the next level. And for me, who the hell wants to be in a camera or on a stage speaking? It's not actually that fun unless you're a showman or something. And we're not professional public speakers. We are guys that are good at a certain thing who then turn to that as a, a traffic source. So you are going to have to get out of your comfort zone. And for me, I would say it's one of the best things I've ever done. Um, you know, in terms of exposure, traffic, everything that I get all comes most, you know, people talk about SEO and of course SEO is what I love and, and all that stuff. But most of my traffic actually comes from social media, conference speaking and videos. Now I've been able to completely pivot away from solely relying on being a blogger and, uh, and you've got to embrace it. It's there and we have to, you know, if it's not my fat face that's on there, someone else's face will be there. And why would I want Glenn Ingram to take up all the money in the world? I'm not, I'm going to fight him for it. And uh, 
have to come up with good stories, good fun, show a bit of personality um, to get my share of the, the cake. You know, I saw this um, somewhere once. I don't remember where I saw it or heard it. But it said, you know, when you're afraid of something and have a fear, you do it and then figure out how to get over the fear afterwards. And I think that's what a lot of people have trouble doing because I'm 100% with you. I think I've told Paul this story. My first job in sales, I was sent out to buy Paul. I'm out in Pennsylvania. And literally the first day I sat in the hotel room petrified and didn't leave the room. And the next day I realized, you know what? I don't live in Pennsylvania. If I act like a jackass or stupid, these people are never going to see me again. I went out that day and started doing stuff. And that's how I made a lot of mistakes until I became better at something. But I think fear is what paralyzes people and restrains us. And it's our own perceptions more often than the reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's all in your own head, really. It is. And, you know, you bring up, you both bring up some really interesting things about public speaking. And that is number one, Glenn, you're talking about going on a, a sales call, mm -hmm. which my contention is all business communication is a form of public speaking. So obviously that nervousness that you're feeling is it's no different from the nervous feeling that Craig was talking about in his first real quote unquote public speaking event. But still it's the same thing. Anytime the stakes are, are pretty high. Um, and I always recommend to everyone that there's no, there is no magic bullet that makes that feeling go away, but there are things you can do to learn to habituate with that feeling. There, there is, there are breathing techniques. There is a mindset that you have to adopt and uh, you have to be able to be very clear and, and definitely have an opening statement so you can plant your flag right in the sand. Because we all know what it feels like to step into the vacuum of silence when everybody gets quiet and suddenly you're the only person rowing the boat. And that can be a scary feeling on any level. You know, I, I always tell everyone, the people you look at who seem like they're immune to it, they've just learned to habituate with it. That's all. They're just accustomed to it. They have figured out ways, like you said, they, they were bold enough to do it just as both of you guys are and have been. So you, you do eventually get used to it. But I agree with, with what you said earlier, Craig, about there are opportunities out there. Don't say no. Don't say no to those opportunities. You will get better. And it is how you promote your brand. Putting yourself out there is, is really important. I have a quick question. Some of the posts that I've seen you put up lately, and I think this would be of interest to our, to our listeners, uh, you've talked about some of the biggest mistakes. And one of the things, the mistakes in SEO, and one of the things that I know attracts my attention on almost any level about any subject is for somebody to go, well, don't do that. Don't do that. And don't do that. Because we, we all know when we see something we don't like or something that doesn't work. So start off, if you would, with just a, a few of the biggest mistakes that you see in your, in your business, in your area of expertise. Um, okay, there's, there's, there's a catalogue of them and, and uh, <laughs> some of the biggest mistakes um, that I see and, and, and one of the first ones that I ever done was I built myself into my business rather than working on the business. Now I put that down to starting out I really didn't know what I was doing. I was too young, didn't have any business education and I was basically bumbling along. Now I built myself into that business and it became a bit of a stress for me and uh, looking back on it you know I should have taken myself out of the business and worked on it and replaced myself in the office um, and these are things that you don't know until you actually get out there and I think a lot of us are not setting out in digital marketing to be businessmen as such you become good at digital marketing before you know it you're hiring a web guy a writer a you know, a PA and an accountant. And before you know it, you've got all these people looking at you and calling you boss and all that stuff. Um, and you're just like, geez, how the hell did that happen? And that is literally how it happens. So that, you know, is a mistake that I made. Now, secondly, again, you have people giving you advice and you're 23, 24, 25, running your first business. 
you ain't taking advice from no one. Um, you know, you've got the big ego, you think you're the, the king of the world, and people are saying, Yeah, you want to do this, you want to do that, you you don't want to be working too hard and delegation and all that stuff. Again, I think sometimes I had to feel the pain before I started making change. Um, so again, I had people giving me advice that I wasn't taking because I was my ego or arrogance or whatever you want to call it um, had the better of me. And I thought I knew best, which I actually didn't in hindsight. Um, so again, that was a mistake. But I think other mistakes um, that I've made over the years, you know, like getting into affiliate marketing, for example, I have jumped into niches that I haven't really thought about. Uh, and you know, seasonal niches, niches that don't actually make me that much money. Um, you know, I've went after promoting products that cost 20 bucks rather than 200 bucks. There's so many things that I thought I would just dive two-footed into. Now, you probably understand that a lot of the mistakes I make are down to me and my impatient approach and a jump two-footed into anything I don't really give things a second thought now I think that's actually a positive thing in some ways where you know I sometimes strike lucky some you know sometimes you know I woke up one day thinking I want to be a public speaker I want to be the next big SEO and I went away and done it you know and I, I done it two-footed I wasn't caring the speak here speak there speak everywhere that's that's the approach I've got so sometimes that can work for you but again it's, it's it's a gung-ho approach and you can run into a lot of mistakes. And even now, you know, I've, I've made 90% of everything I've done is a mistake. 10% of it stuck and actually made me decent money. And I think for me, it's taken 18 years. I'm 40 years old now. I've made a load of mistakes. And for me as a, a guy that's a public speaker or maybe seen as an experienced SEO, it's about me sharing that and helping someone get to to where I got where I've got to in five years rather than the 18 years it took me or four years or three years or whatever it might be um but yeah I've I've done so many mistakes hiring the wrong people I hired locally rather than uh, outsourcing work to countries that have a lower cost of living I you know hiring the whole hiring process was wrong. My whole business structure was wrong. I wasn't delegating enough. I was a control freak. I wanted everything to run through me. Um, I didn't have any staff training. I didn't have any processes. So these are all things that, you know, and I see Glenn laughing there. These are all things that he's probably done. And, uh, and he, you know, he's, he's laughing now and we can all laugh at it. But I wouldn't change it for the world because the way I see it is, I probably served probably 10 year apprenticeship before I actually became good at this stuff. You know, the first 10 years was I was I was charging people money. Um, but you know, basically I wasn't spending it right and I wasn't re really getting an ROI for the spend that I was putting out. I was just coasting along. And I think probably in the last eight years I've been able to invest in things and, and hone my skills a little bit and actually have some form of direction like why is all these guys speaking on the stage and I'm not there I'm as experienced as that guy I need on that stage because why shouldn't I be on that stage and I made that happen but before I never even gave these things a thought it was just coasting along I had a figure in my head of what I needed to turn over as a business and that was it and I was quite happy with that but I was happy for what a, a, a life full of stress and actually not making that much money. The turnover looked good. The profit was garbage. So there's so many things that, that I share at conferences of mistakes um, and, and just things that I've done that are just fundamentally wrong. It was just garbage. And I'm surprised that I even came out the other end. When I look back at it, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you know, I've come out of this and I have no idea how. So it just shows you how bad some other people are running their businesses as well. Um, so you need to give yourself a pat on the back out there, you know, if you are managing to, to you know, hang it out. Because I think we all have that imposter syndrome where you're uh, pinching yourself going, Jesus, am I still making money from this garbage? Am I really even that good? And uh, I think you have to overcome that. And that drops off after 10 years or whatever. Um, it might be different for other people, but yeah, that's some of the stuff I've done that's been absolutely garbage. Mm. We've, we've all been there. 
anybody who's not laughing right now when you're telling that story is probably still making the mistakes. But there are always new mistakes to make. <laughs> it's a, just a different level. So exactly. what were you going to say, Glenn? I think it doesn't matter if you're doing SEO, if you're a public speaker, if you're a, a, a chef for a restaurant, if you're a plumber, if you're anything. We know and learn one thing around us. But what we learn in school, if we go to school for business, isn't very practical to what we really do from a day-to-day -day experience and how to run a business. So it takes all, I saw this quote yesterday that says, um, I, am, I make good decisions because of my experience. I have experience from making bad decisions. And it's true. <laughs> you know, we don't have systems in place. We don't have these things in place. Um, Paul and I had this um, woman on a few months ago that works and tries to help people buy franchises. And for whatever reason, that finally clicked in my head because I always thought, why would someone buy a franchise? Well, here's your book. You open it up. When you open the door, you do this. When you close the door, you do that. It gives you a system on how to run the business that's been tried and true and proven over the years. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when we, I got into SEO, you got into SEO, we knew, I knew how to sell SEO. I figured out how to do SEO. I, when I want to start having websites, it's like crap. Now I got to figure out how to do this stuff all along the way. That's why you have such a healthy um, expense on learning all these things. And now that you look back on it, it's like, this is kind of easy now. Why wasn't it so easy before? Well, you had made all those mistakes. You didn't have those systems in place and you didn't know what to do. And I think that's the biggest thing that I try and share with people when they're starting off is, do you have a mentor? Do you have someone you can trust, whether it be paid or free or whatever, to learn from the mistakes that they have made? Yeah. Right. And, and to just sort of extend on that idea of you, you become trusted based on your experience, but you only gain that experience from your mistakes. The whole idea that um, you want to make sure that you are giving something enough time, but also you don't want to stay in that, as you were saying, Craig, that niche for too long if there's something that's not right about it. So I know Glenn is, uh, talk, we were talking just prior to the beginning of this year about this being 2021, being the bounce back year for everyone, being the pivot year. Um, but what, what are your thoughts, guys, on keep doing what you're doing or does, does everybody need to make a big adjustment at this time or is this not the right time to make a big adjustment? And I know that that's a case by case and personal thing, but just maybe some general thoughts for, for our listeners. Glenn, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, you know, I, again, I think they have to evaluate everything. Um, in the 20 some years I've been working in marketing advertising with businesses, um, I think if you're not doing some self-evaluation every year, if not a couple of times a year, and trying to, again, evaluate what's working well, what's not working, the stuff that you know is not working, pull it out and try and put something on there. I mean, it, it's a cliche-ish, but I think it's true. If you're not moving forwards, you're typically moving backwards. You rarely just stay on the same path. So I think it's always good to evaluate what you're doing and find out what you can do to add to it. But if you have something that's at least somewhat successful, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Try and improve that and then try and bring out other things that you can accentuate that with. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. I'll give you like my example of what I want to do in 2021. So in 2020, when COVID hit, what I wanted to do was really accelerate on the YouTube side of things and use the time while I was locked up uh, or away from conferences to grow my YouTube channel, which is why I've been splashing out so many videos. Now, as a result of that, I get inundated with inquiries. I get inundated with social media messages, inboxes from all over the place. Now, fundamentally, that is not working that well for me now i put my name out there i'm getting a lot more exposure but i'm also getting a lot more spam i'm getting a lot more people trying to sell to me and i am missing out on good opportunities because i wake up in the morning going jesus you know I i've got you know 120 messages between skype whatsapp text messages emails um, and, and all these inboxes that i've got now Again, for me, I need to refine that process. I need to automate some of it. I need to delegate some of that crap out, um, you know, to clean up those things. So again, I'm still making mistakes. I don't have the right answers for everything, but I've now found myself, you know, being overwhelmed by the amount of 
um, inboxes and, 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 you know, people want to communicate with me personally. And that comes with a result of you trying to build a personal brand. People want to talk to me and sometimes I miss messages and it's really bloody ignorant and, uh, and, and stuff like that. But again, I, I, it's about understanding what the problem is and dealing with it. And, you know, I can use um, at like different systems where all of the, the emails go into a certain, you know, one big place and people in my team can reply to them. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why I'm launching a, a big free SEO course as well, because I'm asked a lot of questions and I want to have a database of if someone asks a question, someone in my team can just ping them out the video to answer that question. And it means that I'm driving people to my YouTube, to my Facebook, to my, you know, or if it's this channel, if someone wants mm -hmm. to, you know, if this was the most relevant thing. So again, I've got a problem and it's finding a resolution to that problem. But I think the first thing is, is admitting you do have that problem. And a lot of people don't, they bury their head in the sand um, and don't, take action on it i know that i need someone to clean up my inboxes i know that i need some form of automation i'm playing around with mobile monkey and um, which is a facebook thing larry kim's made and i'm trying to automate a lot of the the responses on my facebook page where possible and uh, just trying to to clean things up so for me it's not about outrageous growth it's refining what i've got that's working really well so the point there is you know of course there's always going to be room to to move forward um but sometimes you just need to refine underlying processes and issues that are in your business as well but as glenn says you don't want to be going backwards or, or stagnating there's always scope for improvement um out there you know i could be better at a lot a lot of things and uh, a lot of people just don't want to admit that but Glenn, I'm sure you're the same. You've got underlying issues there in your business that frustrate you, and I'm sure they can be ironed out. And I think for this year, for me personally, being in Scotland, we're in another national lockdown, and it's about using this time wisely because I want to come out the other end flying, you know, with my brand, being all over the place and having all of this stuff systemized and semi-automated or whatever it might be so that I'm not le leading a stressful life. Well, and I think to piggyback on that and to add to it, the one thing that everyone needs to understand, I don't care if you're a salesperson and you're starting to do more calls, more speaking, more um, you know, networking or whatnot, if you're a business owner and you're doing different things to get your business out in front of people, whether you're doing SEO with Craig, whether you're doing different things, you have to kind of always play chess and think a couple of steps ahead, because if you're not prepared for this exposure you're going to have, um, it can it can overwhelm you. Because inevitably, the more exposure you have, you're going to have a, a percentage of people that you want to get in front of. They can become good clients, good partners for you, or whatnot. But then you have this other group of people over here that are just going to suck the life out of you, and it aren't going to be good clients, but you have to deal with those in order to get to the sweet spot. So anytime you have more exposure, you better have some plans on how you're going to handle that. Otherwise you're going to be pulling your hair out. Yeah. And that's what I'm at just now. Pulling mm -hmm. the old be, that's one of those, be, be careful what you wish for or be careful what you work for. Yes. Because in the end you, you do, there is, it's a big commitment to, to do this. You, you do have a responsibility if you want to maintain your business because some people watching right now might say, well, yeah, I'm not all that interested in SEO, but in reality, it encompasses a lot of things. There is an awareness that you have to have of so many of the components of what social media is really all about. And at its core, it's about connecting with people and being able to give them something that they feel comfortable and, and trust getting from you. Yeah. Come on, Paul, there's no such thing as social media. There are advertising platforms that give the illusion that you're communicating with people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're all in the matrix together. Yes. <laughs> so Craig, if you had knew someone, I don't care what their business was, they were starting out, whether it be digital marketing or anything like this, what piece of advice would you give them to help them try and get started on the right foot and maybe avoid some mistakes that we've all fallen into? 
a bloody hard question. Um, I think <laughs> the, 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 I mean, there's a lot more help these days for these people. You know, you've got a lot of like local council help that can put you through certain classes and stuff like that. Now, people might think that's a bit geeky, you know, launch a new business class or whatever you've got going on. But I think these are fundamentally really important to go to. Now, when I started out in business again, you know, I hired a couple of people, I had an office and all that. And then someone said something about an accountant to me. And I'm like, what? You mean accountant? I'm not paying for an accountant. Um, but anyway, I didn't really know what accountancy was. I didn't really know what tax and VAT was. I had no bloody clue what I was doing. And they uh, spoke to the accountant and he's talking about, you know, different schemes like flat rate schemes and various other, all of these kind of businessy things. And I was blown. I was like, man, I don't even know what any of this means. Can you not just look after it for me? And uh, and I made him do the PAYE and everything. And he would just basically tell me what I owed the, the government, what you, you know, I owed the tax man and all that stuff. And I was doing it. But I think, you know, again, you know, you go into these things, there's a lot of help now. And I, I would take any help you can get listening to, you know, whether it's reading books, whether it's going to these classes or whatever, understand the basics of business, because that's something I didn't have a clue about. Uh, not even the bare basics down to, you know, accountancy or whatever, or what I could claim back. Or, I had no clue. And uh, I think that was a massive, massive eye opener for me. And it, and it also worried me quite a lot as well. So I think, you know, understanding, and it's a thing, a lack of education and, and schooling and stuff like that. Um, you know, I know a guy, Robert Kiyosaki, who always goes on about it. Schools don't teach you how to make money. They, they basically uh, teach you how to work for money or, or words to that effect. And I think our education systems across the world teach people to become employees um, rather than business owners. And that's why we leave school, we fumble around for a few years, start businesses, and, and, and as Glenn says, fundamentally piss so much money up against the wall, making mistakes and you know having our education costing more than it would to be a bloody fighter pilot you know that's essentially <laughs> essentially what we're doing here and that comes down to lack of you know business acumen and I had none of it whatsoever wasn't taught anything in school nothing like that you know I've just left the fend for myself and it all has been self-taught from here on in so I think business acumen is something you need to try and get something some form of grasp on and uh and I would have probably done a lot better from there on in uh, had, had I not done that. But again, I can't emphasise the importance enough of delegation and systemization. you know, making a system or a process for everything that you do is so important. It just makes life so much easier. Those couple of things are really what is going to take you from A to B and, and be able to scale up a business. Because if not, if you don't have the processes in place, you are screwed. You're always going to be running around like a headless chicken and there's going to be a ceiling on what you can earn and the capacity that you can take on um, in terms of customers, regardless of what you do. Well, we have, uh, I think you're going to say we have a question, Glenn? Yes. Um, okay. And this is a good one. And I'm going to chime in last. It says, did you guys start with a business plan? Okay. <laughs> well, let me take this in pieces. The first decade of my working life, I worked for somebody else. So to say that I had a business plan simply meant that I worked really hard and made enough money to get by. Like Craig was saying earlier, how I made it through those, those years, it still doesn't make any sense on paper. So that would be a no, decade number one. Decade number two, I worked for myself, worked really hard, made enough money to make it out to the other end, but still followed the same pattern. So decade number two, no. Decade number three, I decided to work for somebody else. So then my business plan was just to work really hard. And only in the last, I'd say, two years did I start off with a business plan, but a flexible one in that. So my 
you put that all together and the answer, the larger percentage answer is no. But I learned, I learned how to try to project a little bit more, how to understand what the expenses were. Yes, uh, 2020 was a curveball, but uh, we all adjusted. So that's been my experience. Greg? Um, so again, I didn't <laughs> set out with a plan. I, it was all fumbling along and, and you know, I had a business and I didn't even set out to do it. So absolutely no plan at all from me. I, I, I just had a hunger and enthusiasm and found myself to be good at SEO before I knew I had a business. There was no plan, no direction. Even when I was running my own agency, you, you, I look back on it and I kick myself. I went for nine years with that agency. And uh, do you know what? I never had any real thought process of scaling up. It was just making ends meet week on week on week um you know I, I had a lot of fear a lot of you know crappy setups and my whole thought process was how am I going to pay everyone on Friday <laughs> and that cycle happened for nine years uh, and when I look back at it and I look at the turnover and everything else then where the money went and all that stuff it was an absolute mess it's a riot I don't mind telling anyone that it was an absolute garbage can of a business and uh, it wasn't until then you know I, I had four or five years as a freelancer in the house just bumbling along nine years as an agency owner so 14 years of I don't even know <laughs> I don't words can't say what it was there was no plan there was no structure it was an absolute mess 14 year apprenticeship if you like and uh and to be honest, seeing the first four or five years as a freelancer, I probably earned more than I did in that nine years as an agency owner um, because all the money was mine. I didn't have all these crazy overheads. And uh, so I probably wasted nine years of my life until I became a bit older and wiser. And, you know, in, in the last, say, five or six years, I really did wake up and think, geez, you know, you, you, you're, you know, you're 35 and you've you've not got this, you've not got that, you've got no direction, you've got no ambition, you've got no goals, you've got nothing, and you have to have a goal. I wanted to, I don't know why, I just seen the conference speakers and I thought, I want on that stage, I'm better than what these guys are doing, I'm funnier than these guys, I have more charisma than these guys, I need on that stage, and I made it happen. Now, I had to obviously beg and scra scrape around to get speaking opportunities, but I was fully confident that once I was on that stage, that people would hopefully see value in what I was trying to, to bring to the table. Um, so I had goals and ambitions and said, I want to do this. I don't want to do client work. Somehow everything just clicked for me. Get away from clients. You know, these guys are stressing me out. Whereas before, everything that was in my head was, how do I pay everyone on Friday? How do I pay everyone on Friday? That's all that went on. And... You know, I don't know what the, the actual thing was that, that made all of that trigger, but I, I basically, I I'm, and I'm not going to lie, I basically had anxiety and the doctor said to me, so I went to the doctors one Christmas and I just had this kind of horrible feeling, it, like I was scared inside my whole body, like it, it was anxiety at the end, I didn't really know what it was. And I went to the doctor and they said, have you got money problems? Have you got, you know, problems with the wife or whatever? And I'm like, you know, I'm making good money. I've, you know, I've got a, a wife who supports me and, you know, life was good. I says, I really don't know what it is. And he was asking a bit about the business. Uh, and I said, like, sometimes I'm working till 3 a.m. and stuff like that. And I was just super stressed. And I, what I would say, looking back, is because I was so stressed and so burnt out, that I didn't, nothing, there was nothing creative in my mind. Nothing was like pushing me uh, to, to say, go and do this or go and copy that guy or do affiliate marketing. It was just, you know, stress. And, and, and as I say, once I got the, the medication for anxiety, which I, I and, and when he said, you, you've got anxiety and stuff, I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I shouldn't have anxiety. That's, you know, for weak people or whatever. I'm like, that, that shouldn't be for me. So, you know, it started to have a medical impact in my life and and at that point something inside me just went enough's enough you know it's not cool 
having an office full. I had 17 staff in my office at one point, which might not be a lot for other people, but for me, that was overwhelming. And it was probably cool telling my mates down the pub, yeah, you've got 17 staff. But the reality is I was a fool. I had, you know, a whole lot of the wrong staff, people robbing off me, you know, not doing work. And uh, something just said, get out, get out now. And uh, that's, and then I had a plan and it was all in my head. There was no proper business plan written down or went to, 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 you know, to any of these business things or anything like that. It was just in my head saying, I want to do this and this is how I'm going to do it. And I've done it. All right. So when I hear, do you have a business plan? That brings me to two thoughts. A, that's something that we learned in business school. Or B, that's something that someone does if they want to get a loan. The reality of it is, is the business plan that you do for that has nothing to do with 95% of what you're going to do in business. Because of having a plan without execution and short-term obje objectives and goals, it's just, I, you know, I could say I want to be an astronaut. Well, you know, I didn't go to school for science. I'm not in Na at NASA. I, I could say I want to be an astronaut and that could be my business plan. It's not reality. I think for anyone that has a business or that's starting a business, sometimes we get caught up in financial goals. I want to make $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $100,000 a year, whatever that is. But if you don't have a plan of what you're going to do day by day, week by week, month by month to where you can have short, smaller victories and those smaller victories, when you let them all add up, okay, now I'm going to get to where I want to at the end of the rainbow. But if I don't have a specific plan of this is how I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, that business plan is worthless. So I think it's better to have systems, executable um, objectives, and knowing what you're doing short-term, that way you can hit your long-term numbers. And I say this because when we started our company, I remember my wife was up doing taxes January. We started our company in August. Well, I officially started working after I quit my other job. The company might have started a minute or two before that. Um, and she said, do you have any idea what you made last year? And I said, I didn't miss a monthly goal. She said, no, do you know what you made? I said, I didn't miss a monthly goal. And I didn't worry about the end of the rainbow. I just knew I did this. And she came down and she goes, um, you know, for doing this five months, you made $100,000 last year. It wasn't too bad. I guess you can keep doing it but I had no clue what I made overall. I just knew I hit every monthly goal. Right. Yeah. N knowing, knowing that it will, that it will add up is, and again, I realize we're saying, we're, it almost sounds like we are possibly saying contradictory things. And this is one of those observations that just keeps, keeps smacking me right in the face almost every day is just, the yin and yang of life, how the things that the, the processes that we utilize that are so important to doing this can also be boundaries that are holding us back from things. But then again, if we don't have these boundaries, we are not going to have the sort of success or the, the ultimate success that we're looking for. So, uh, so much of this really is, is a balancing act between, and I agree with what, what you said, Glenn, about a business plan is when you are looking to get investors, looking to get a loan, uh, something that you definitely learn in business school, how to put it together the right way and what are, what are the things to watch out for, because I know we could spend a whole nother blab it just talking about the unexpected things that come up. But that business plan is there so you have an idea of what direction you're going in. And I agree. You don't always want to be looking at what the destination is. Occasionally you can trip when, when the train gets a little bumpy, but you also don't want to be looking at your feet. So it is that balance between the long range vision and also taking all of the necessary steps. All right. Keep talking for a second. I'm going to reply back to this last question privately because I don't know if it's for this or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's, that sounds good. So when, when people, and, and I realize we're getting right near the end of Blabbit, but just really quickly from you, Craig, I would love to hear um, just in general, when you talk to somebody who does, is not in the marketing business that you are is not involved in SEO, when they hear that acronym SEO, what is it that they miss? What is it that is so important? It's not 
just you pay a lot of money to somebody, you get rated really high on a search engine, and then your business takes off. I mean, it's it's much more detailed than that. And I'm not looking for a detailed answer, but just what are the things that most people just totally don't, they miss, they just totally miss about what's important about SEO? I mean, they, they miss things like, you know, some businesses have no clue what SEO is. They don't realize that their competition are taking up all of the money that's out there for their industry. Now, secondly, some business owners think they're doing good SEO and they'll get a Yellow Pages website or something like that. And they don't realize that you need to work a website to into to ranking well, which involves adding pages for geographic locations and a whole bunch of other underlying things that are going to help you go there. You know, I've had guys come to me saying, right, I've got a website now, but I'm not getting any inquiries. And you're like, what, what, what are you doing to get inquiries? I don't know. I just paid this guy, you know, 5,000 bucks for a website and nothing's happening. And uh, so, so business owners don't get it at all. They do not get it. And that's where, again, it comes down to, to what you guys do with the, the uh, web accessibility. People don't know they're getting their backside sued because their website's not accessible to blind people. They, 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 don't, they probably don't even know that their website has to be fit for blind people. They don't even really know what a website is. So I think, uh, in my opinion, in short, is that business owners are very old school in terms of their thought. And a lot of business owners are older guys who completely missed the boat when it comes to digital and everything else and trying to get them to understand that digital marketing is a big open place and not just a yellow pages book is essentially where we're at. So that's it in short. Well, and since I came from the yellow page industry, Craig, I've loved that question because what I told people with that knowledge, as I said, did you like that big, beautiful ad you had in the phone book? Yes, it did this. I like this. I had my truck and stuff like this. I said, if we didn't deliver that to every house in the area, what good would that ad have done to you? Well, nothing. Aha, uh -huh. the same with your website. <laughs> That's a really good analogy to wrap things up with, Glenn. I thank you for that because, uh, and, and thank you, Craig, for being on the show and shedding a little bit of light on the area of SEO, its importance, some of the details, and also sharing your, your journey with us, which just in terms of life experience, I can see from some of the, the chat that we have going on, is not always just business oriented. It's really about the struggles of life, the challenges, and I'm gonna keep using your term from now on, which is you come out on the other end. I yeah. like that. So if anyone would like to reach out to you, Craig, since you have plenty of time and no one contacting you, how would you suggest they do that? Um, you can find me on my website, which is craigcampbellseo.com. And you've got access to all the social media, the YouTube channel, and everything else that I've got available to you on there. I was kind of only joking when I say I don't like people contacting me. I'm always happy to speak to new people. Just don't ask me very basic things or try and sell me anything. Um, you know, that 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 is somewhat uh, stressful. But if you've got something or you want to get engaged, talk about something, whatever it might be, I'm more than happy to communicate with people. Awesome. Well, Fantastic. Craig, thank you very much. It's always an enjoyment talking to you. No worries. Thank you very much for having me, guys.